Welcome back to another episode of EV Everything. Today we're going to be talking about my Tesla Model S. This is a used Tesla that we bought a little over a year ago. So this video is going to be about the year plus since that we've owned it. This is a 2014 uh, Model S with the 85 kilowatt hour battery pack. It's not the performance edition or anything like that. It's just the basic version of that car. So while we're on the outside of the car, let's just take a look at the exterior. The Model S really hasn't changed that much in the years that it's been in production. But there are a few elements here that we'll notice uh, that show us that it is an older uh, Model S. So maybe the most noticeable thing is the wheels. Um, these are uh, just some really basic wheels. I think they still look pretty good. Uh, but you know, they are kind of like this standard design, not as cool as like the windmill design that they have on a lot of their cars now. Something else that maybe doesn't stand out, but that you'll notice once you point it out, is this little Tesla logo on the side here. It uh, doesn't actually have a camera built into it. So this is just a light, it'll blink, I think, when the blinkers go off. But newer uh, Model S's and all Teslas have a built-in camera that they integrate into this part. And that's for, uh, you know, the autopilot, and uh, so you can see all around different sides of the car. This car is old enough that it doesn't have any of those features, so there are no cameras on the exterior of the car at all. There are some sensors on the front and back bumper which do uh, set off a, an alarm or like a chime inside the car whenever you start getting close to something, maybe once something's about four feet away as you get closer. So you do have those parking sensors, but no cameras anywhere on the outside. Uh, we still have uh, the handles, these are the handles that kind of uh, retract into the car so that it's flush and helps with aerodynamics. And then if I press the handle, um, then it pops out and auto presents to me and that's how I am able to open the door and close it. And then if I walk away from the car or just leave it here for a few moments, you'll see the handles will retract. And on the front of the grill area, we just have this black nose cone with some chrome trimming and the Tesla logo. Newer versions of the car have the more flush front fascia design style. But this does have a sunroof, and it's not just a sunroof, it actually has uh, the front half of the sunroof opens. And that's something that, to my understanding, is not included in Model S's anymore. Um, so I do like that it has that available. Don't know why they got rid of it, maybe they had mechanical problems with it, or maybe water was leaking in, I have no idea. Um, but I do appreciate that this car has the sunroof that opens. You also have these little, we haven't used them, but it's nice to see these built-in mounting points for putting on uh, roof racks. Now, if we move to the front of the car, I'm gonna use my key fob. Two presses on the front half of the key fob is going to open the trunk, or the hood rather. I'm calling it the trunk because it operates as a front trunk storage space. It is quite a bit of usable space. I mean, it's really impressive. I don't know the exact dimensions of this space, but not only do you have the usable front area here, you also have this kind of deeper, maybe foot and a half section, you know, deep area, and you've got this netting that you can use to protect, uh, you know, if you've got groceries in there, or maybe you have takeout, keeps things from sliding around. So not only this big cavernous space in the front, but also a very usable space that even goes and barrels deeper into the car. The car is very impressive just in space in general. So we're gonna take a look in the trunk in the back and then of course the interior space. But for a luxury sedan, technically a hatchback because of how the back trunk is, uh, a lot of good usable space and really cool that you have this space up front under the hood. And there's nothing else really under here except the washer fluid it looks like, and then uh, you can replace the air filter as well. Now similarly in the back, we have a lot of boot space here. So again, we take our key fob, two taps on the back end of it now, and that will open up the rear cargo trunk area. We've got this privacy shade here, which is really easy to fold or to just take out entirely. But look at all that usable space we have there. I mean, this, this runs deep and because uh, there's, it's a hatchback design and you know, it's open to the cabin. We don't have anything, uh, you know, no low rise roof that's keeping it from stacking. We can stack things pretty high here. And I've got a floor mat in here for protection, but underneath the floor mat is uh, another lower storage area. And so there's really nothing I have down there except my uh, Tesla charging accessories. They're mainly just like adapters 
for using out at uh, public charging stations. And uh, the floor mat makes it a little difficult to get to that, but I like having a floor mat here just to protect the fabric from getting too scratched up. And the lift gate raises up pretty high so that you don't, uh, you know, you can either get in and out without hitting your head too easily. The rear seats also come down. I'm not sure they go entirely flat, but pretty flat, and they're really easy to do. So that's the one side, um, and I'd have to get onto the other side uh, to reach the small one. But, uh, you know, it's got that 60-40 split and almost a flat space. But yeah, I mean, I've loaded up, you know, a bunch of mulch recently to do some yard work. Put a bunch of bags of mulch in here. I was really surprised the usability of space. Uh, if you don't have backseat passengers, you can really maximize what you can carry in this car. And again, for something that has a sedan form factor, just really impressive, uh, that amount of space. So it's also this button, um, you know, you can pull it. There's, there's some handles here if you want to manually pull the lift gate back down, or you can just press the button and the powered lift gate will close it for you. And that's that. How about we take a look inside? And now if I get into the back here, sitting behind myself, how my seat is adjusted, and I like to have it, you know, a little bit uh, leaned back, but I have plenty of leg space here, as you can hopefully tell. Um, you know, maybe like seven or eight inches. Um, you know, the seat is kind of low, so it, it, or maybe it's not that the seat's low, it's that the floor is high because of the battery pack underneath there. So your legs do kind of come off the seat, they don't rest down on them. Uh, the biggest thing about this back seat is that while the headroom is not bad, I think because of the sunroof, you may not be able to see, and yeah, you can't, the top of my head, there's probably less than an inch of clearance, like my hair is brushing the glass roof. But what you really can't even use are these back head seats. You know, I'd have to be down like this, these headrests rather is what I meant to say, you know, for my head to actually rest on the headrest on the back of the seat. So this headrest might be good for small kids or, or you know, shorter adults, but really my head is resting on like just the fabric, you know, border along the roof. So maybe not the most comfortable place to be. I've sat in the Model Y before and the headroom is much improved, but as far as leg room and just general interior space, it's very impressive. It's more backroom space than in my Nissan Leaf. And unlike the Leaf, the back floor is completely flat. There's no hump here or anything like that. You do get rear, uh, you know, vents, AC vents for your rear seat passengers, which is nice. One big dilemma about the car, and you know, it's a, it's a small thing, but a bigger thing maybe to some people, uh, no cup holders for passengers. There's only two cup holders in the front, uh, and you'll see those when we move up there, but there's nothing in the doors. There's nothing that comes out of the back seat here, and there's nothing that pops out, you know, like in the Model X, I think. There's a, you know, rear seat cup holders that pop out there. So not really any usable storage space back here uh, besides human bodies. There's room for you to sit, plenty of room for your feet. Maybe you could put some luggage or something down here with you, but, you know, not even a seat back pocket or anything like that. So it is an improvement in space compared to our Chevrolet Volt, which had some pretty miserable backroom space and especially headroom. So the Model S, because it's that luxury uh, sedan style, still not a ton of headroom back here, but more comfortable than the Volt that we had before. Okay, so here we are in the front seat. And before I start driving, I'll just you know kind of mention some things that are in this area. This is where you'll primarily be sitting in the car. Um, this the interior, I like the colors. I don't think they offer this color anymore, but again, this is an older car. Obviously, they used to offer this color, and you know, I always kind of like the white interior idea, but it just seems like a hassle to clean. So this kind of grayish color, I'm not sure what they call it exactly, but I mean, it's as close to getting to that as, as I could imagine without it being a bright white. And I think it goes really well with the blue exterior. Um, and uh, the interior space is good, you know, even more roomy than in the back. As far as headroom, I've probably got, you know, two inches or so of headspace to the glass roof. Um, over here, my hair kind of touches on the side, and you know, they used to offer this car, maybe they still do, but I've seen versions that don't have the glass roof at all, so I imagine you'd be losing a bit of headspace in that situation and would feel more claustrophobic. But because we have the glass roof, um, and again, this is the one that opens. In fact, I'll just demonstrate that real quick here. Um, you can access it real quickly from the screen. So if I hit open, you know, we actually get a halfway opened roof. And so it defaults to 75% open. I can open it 
100%, and it goes a little further, and it feels really nice, kind of that convertible feel driving the car this way. I don't think they offer this anymore um, in the Model S or, or any Tesla that the roof opens. So if you like that feature, you might look at an older Tesla like this. I'm not sure what year or at what point they stopped offering that. Um, so in the car, we don't have a lot of things going on. It's not as minimalist as new Teslas, but um, it's still pretty simple. A lot of things are controlled from the big screen. I'll get into that a little bit later. Um, but we got a nice big old steering wheel here. It just has a few knobs. You control everything from these knobs and you can kind of assign what the knobs do, but just generally it's kind of volume on the left and I, I have it set to control my AC on the right, the fan speed. In fact, I'll turn that on right now because it's going to start getting warm in here. So I'll turn the AC on from the main screen, main screen, and then can adjust the fan speed from the steering wheel going forward. Now the center display of the car gets a lot of attention. I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on it uh, because honestly I don't use it for a lot of the features it probably has. Um, you know, if we just go to the car information, brings the pop-up screen here, and uh, this is where you just kind of generally have the things that you can do with the car. So, you know, here is sometimes where I'll, this is where I'll open the sunroof and open the trunk if I need to. Uh, this car has air suspension, so you can actually raise uh, the height of the car, which is kind of cool. So it tells me it, at very high, it goes up to 6.9 inches, high is 6.5, standard is 5.7 inches. So that's, that's quite a bit of difference um, um, using this air suspension. Not all cars have that, but this car was optioned with it. I only use it to uh, raise it whenever I'm going into my driveway, which it does automatically because it knows that we live there. Um, you know, driving stuff. I have it in comfort, standard regenerative braking, which is very strong. Doesn't bring it to a complete stop, but uh, close to that. Just a bunch of settings in here. And, you know, the newer Teslas don't look like this. A lot of things have been changed for that massive, you know, horizontally uh, designed center display in the Model 3 and uh, the Model Y. Um, and software is a big thing, too. Uh, downloading software when necessary automatically happens as long as you're uh, signed in or connected to your home Wi-Fi, which we are um, at home. Um, and the one thing I will say about the screen just while we're looking at it, um, you see like down here there's a yellow spot. These are the old generation one screens. So there are two spots that are kind of yellow on the screen. They don't affect anything with uh, the performance of the screen. It just uh, is a cosmetic issue. I don't know why it's turning yellow. Maybe these are high touch areas. Okay, there's a little one here, but there's a much bigger one here that just looks yellow and kind of gross. Um, at the top, you can lock the car. Charging is a big one to go to. Uh, if we hit the charge, it tells you your state of charge. What's really important about this is that you can set the charge level. Oh, I need to set this first, set the limit. So normally I don't charge to full. I just charged uh, to full as close as I could for the purpose of this video. Normally I'd have it somewhere like that, and that way you're only charging to a certain percentage and protecting the battery by not charging it to full every time, unless you need it, and that's when I use it for trips. Um, so yeah, you got your charging there, got your home link settings uh, to open your garage door if you have it set up that way. It'll just do it automatically as you approach the car. But yeah, it's a cool screen, got a bunch of cool features. You know, I think right now we've got Spotify going on here and radio stations, you can set up your phone, Sirius XM looks like it's also set up, uh, although I don't think we're paying for it, but you have access to that. Um, you know, music, you can ask for any music and it'll, it'll look up, uh, you know, what you're looking for there. And then just the maps is usually what I have it set up as. So with the Google Maps, um, you can navigate wherever you want to go. It'll show it here, but it'll also show it on the, the screen behind the steering wheel, which is nice. So you don't always have to glance over here. Um, you can just kind of keep looking forward and just glance down. So two different ways to navigate. But yeah, it's a very big screen. At night, it'll switch to a night setting. So right now it's a bright white. And um, at night, it'll, it'll turn black, which is kind of how I prefer it to look. But during the daytime, it's hard to see. So that's the screen. Um, but the layout is nice. The center screen here angles to the driver just a little bit. 
Um, the materials inside are, are good. You know, again, I think early in the video I mentioned this is just kind of like the base model, although it does have some options added. Um, you know, this material is just kind of like a nylon seeming fabric. It's not that fancy Alcantara that you can get. And, uh, you know, this accent, it's like it's like wood here. You know, sometimes I'll see it as like a carbon fiber. There, there's some different options than, you know, that you'll see in different Model S's. I haven't seen this in any other car. I don't know if they stopped making it, just kind of like this color. But it feels like, you know, I'm sure it's not, could be, feels like real wood. Um, and, and I like the look of it. So I like how this car looks on the inside. Again, this color, this light color that's not offered anymore, even the exterior color isn't offered, this shade of blue, it's like a very dark blue. Um, something else that's different is the center console area. People started complaining, I think, and wanted cup holders and stuff, so and more, a more traditional center console, but I like this, it's called a yacht floor, and it's just real open. You just kind of have this tray here that you could set anything. You know, my wife will set her purse here, or if I'm taking uh, food uh, for takeout, if it's small enough, it'll kind of fit in here. There's just one little tray, but there's no, uh, you know, sunglass holder thing up here. Uh, and that's, again, kind of what I said in the back seat. There aren't a lot of storage areas outside of just that big center uh, yacht floor there. You've got these door handles, uh, which you could put things in, but there's not a lot of room. There's no cup holders in the doors. The only cup holders we get are here. They they slide, you know, these little armrests, you kind of choose. You can either have them as armrests or you can slide them back. You know, you can slide back just one or the other, depending who wants a cup holder versus who wants an armrest. I don't have drinks with me a lot, so I don't usually need a cup holder, but I know it's something that people want. Something else that seems kind of like an oversight as far as storage space is that this console doesn't open up in any way. There's no storage inside of here. It's just those cup holders and just serves as an armrest. Down here we have a 12 volt power adapter and then two USBs. Now this is an older car. The new Model S's might have more plugs and I know they offer the more traditional center console storage area. Um, but as far as buttons, there's not a whole lot. You've got your hazard light physical button here and you open your glove box uh, as a physical button. It's interesting they decided to do that. Uh, but you know, I don't really have to go in there very often. Uh, it's just very comfortable interior to be uh, the rear, uh, you know, seeing out the rear, rear glass there, it's actually a good amount of space or, you know, just good visibility. Um, our, our, our Volt, Chevy Volt, had a pretty miserable small little opening back there. And I've heard the Model Y has a similarly small uh, opening in the back. But I think this Model uh, S, it looks just fine to me. Let's just start driving the car now that we've kind of gone over the interior here. Um, this car is the first electric car we've had that has enabled us to travel long distances. And that's, there's two reasons for that. One is that this is already a really big battery, an 85 kilowatt hour battery, EPA rated when this car was new for 265 miles of range. And when I bought the car, uh, it showed 258 miles on a full charge. Now, whether that's just a little battery degradation over the six or seven years of this car, you know, has been around, this specific car, again, this is a 2014. Um, so, you know, 258 miles to still get on this car years later, the car has 53,500 miles is what I'm showing on my odometer right now. So pretty low mileage for a car this old, which is one of the reasons I bought it. But yeah, the elimination of range anxiety pretty much entirely. So, you know, being able to go over 200 miles is a big deal. You're never going to use that in daily driving, and we can go a whole week between charging the car. Um, but when traveling, what made this car appealing is that, and this is the other half of what eliminates that range anxiety, is the access to Tesla's supercharger system. This has been essential to us being able to travel with this car. And we haven't done a lot of traveling, but when we have, the superchargers have been a lifeline to you know, allow us to go as far as we possibly can. And what's great about it is that, yeah, any electric car can stop at a charger and charge up. But any other car besides a Tesla has to wait quite a bit longer, especially if you're just using level two charging speed. So in our Leaf, that would take forever to, to charge it up every time. In the Tesla, using a supercharger, we can get 100 miles added to the car 
in like 15 or 20 minutes. And if we're at a stop where we, you know, decide to leave the car charging and go eat, it's just been an incredible change having a car with a big enough battery. And new cars are coming out now that are offering this level of range. In 2014, when this car, this car came out, if the dealer is right, he showed me that this car cost over a hundred grand and you were paying a premium for a fancy luxury Tesla and on top of that, an electric car that could go that kind of what was crazy driving range at that time. Now we're getting cars that easily uh, go over 200 miles. Tesla has now gone over 300 and you know, we'll probably be at 400 mile range electric cars, you know, very, very soon. So I think that's been the biggest thing owning this car is just the freedom <laughs> from the range anxiety that I never really had, but I think a lot of people can have. I can drive this car for days normally, you know, just doing 10 to 20 miles of driving every day before I have to charge. When I charge the car, I usually charge it at home, which is the ideal setup to have. Not everyone has that, but you know, if you're considering buying an electric car, if you have a home, it's a big positive to be able to have basically a charging station at home that you can, you know, charge whenever you need to. Now, something to talk about briefly is what's it like charging a Tesla. Now, if you've driven an electric car before, it's pretty much the same. So, you know, if you own an EV and if you own a house, then most of your charging probably takes place at home, usually in the overnight hours. And so that's what we do here. We have our 240 volt charger set up. Now, this is a charge cord. It's really called an EVSE, but we'll just call it a charger. This is what comes with the car when you buy it, whether you buy it new or used, you should always have an EVSE provided that you can either plug into just a regular wall outlet, or again, in our case, it's plugged into a 240 volt socket. So this allows for faster charging. And the way that it works is you take the nozzle out of the holster. And if you look at the top here, there's a circle marked for where you're supposed to press down. And if you hold the nozzle real close to this charge port door, which is very well hidden, uh, or at least flush and uh, stylistically part of this rear tail light on the car. You just press that button, hold it real close, and it opens the door for you, illuminates this light blue, kind of strobes a little bit, saying it's ready to accept the nozzle. So you stick that right in. It'll turn green, indicating that charging is starting. Now you can monitor the charging either on the main screen or on the dash screen behind the steering wheel. But in all likelihood, if you're at home and you want to check in to see how your charging is doing, the best way to do that is using your mobile phone and using the Tesla app. So the app is pretty straightforward. You can see here on the main screen, it kind of gives us our charging information already because the car is plugged in. But if you wanted to adjust the charging, you just hit the charging section and here's where you could, you know, adjust if you want more or less of the battery to be charged. Climate section allows you to preheat or pre-cool the car. Um, there's some simple controls like venting the roof, flashing your lights, uh, honking your horn, opening the front and back trunk from here. Also, there's your GPS location for Google Maps. Uh, upgrades, I'm not sure what that is. You schedule your service appointments through the app and then there's roadside assistance, which hopefully you never have to use. Really, in general, this car has been a pleasure to drive and really has us on board with Tesla as a brand. And so I'm excited to own a new Tesla at some point, whether that's a Model Y, which would you know, give us a little more space inside the car, you know, a higher riding vehicle with more interior space, or even the Cybertruck once it comes out and we see the full production version of that truck, see how that would work. Again, we're in Texas, we live in Austin, and as far as I understand, the Cybertruck is going to be assembled and built at the new Tesla factory uh, being built just here in East Austin. So excited to see what Tesla has coming out. Glad to have a part of Tesla's past uh, in our garage now, but also looking very much forward to the future and maybe adding another Tesla vehicle to the garage here, part of our family. So excited to share this with you. If you have any questions about driving a Tesla, feel free to leave comments below. I'll answer. I'm sure other people can contribute and give you their answers and their experience. I'm no Tesla expert. Uh, you know, I've only driven this thing for a little over a year, but I'm definitely on board with the company, with the mission, and I'm excited to share this video with you. Stay tuned for some more episodes. Again, I think a future episode really soon is going to talk about buying used vehicles and kind of the process we went through here in purchasing our used Tesla for under $40,000. So stick around for that episode in the future and I will see you then.